Welcome to the meadow. Two years ago, we bought an old 70s house with the idea of fixing it up for our family of seven. My husband and I run an interior design firm in Great Falls, Virginia, just outside of Washington, DC, where we also rehab and flip houses. We've moved every couple of years as our family has grown, and I've used our homes as my design laboratories, exploring and honing my style, and also using our houses to showcase our design work for potential clients and the various product collections that I design. Each house we've lived in has been an invaluable learning opportunity for our family. As much as we loved the house we had been living in for five years, which was a long time for us, the moment we stepped foot into the meadow, we knew we had to go. It simply called to us. So the real, real framing is happening now for the windows. We've got our windows from Automa. And you can see here, they cut out the subfloor. One of the things I'm super excited about this house, you can see the difference in grade here, is that the terrace is going to actually be completely flush with our hardwood floors inside the house. So they had to cut down the sub subfloor and reframe all of this. And then we created these pockets on the interior of the house and we actually you know lost i think it was like 10 inches or eight inches or something of depth in the room to be able to pocket the doors that are going for all the openings so that is happening in this living room and then that's happening also in our bedroom you can see there's a new pocket there to accommodate the doors and also happening in the kitchen Though it looks like the house is where all the action is, for me, my real work happens in the design studio. I have been picking out materials and finishes for months, and right now we're working on wallpaper. I'm using fabrics and wallpapers from my textile collection throughout the house, and the girls had asked me for a custom meadow-themed wallpaper for their bedroom. So I drew a pattern with all the animals and plants that they wanted, and I'm not quite sure that it's come out. So this is all picked out now. You feel good about this? Mm -hmm. That's your toy room paper. Mm -hmm. And then what's this one? Room paper. Only if I can get the colors right, because I don't know if it's quite perfect yet. Okay, and then we're gonna do, I still need a closet paper. Okay, and then you guys have this for your, Bathroom tile. So look how pretty these all look together. You want to show Daddy? Let's show them all the colors. That's pretty. Mm. Which, you need more, which is nice because this is yellow and green, and that's yellow and green. Yeah. And then that could go in your closet if you want. Approved. Approved. Oh, it's just a now that we've selected the meadow wallpaper for the bedroom, we need to pick out the toy room and closet papers. So this one, and then that one. Okay. Mommy really likes this one. The orange mustard. Who's mama? I know. That's pretty together. Well, I saw it? a really cool white one that I like. Which the one? Pink? The pink one. Wait, can you go to this one? Which one did you like? like really this? Beautiful. This? Mm. You like that paisley? No. Yeah. I like that. That's Queen Anne's lace. You want to pull that out? Yeah. We'll pull out the one you like. Which one is it? No, this one. This is the one I like. Okay. Really? I saw some. Like that. That's kind of cool. It is, and it looks really good. It's really good, too. Dang. She always knows. You got a good eye. Uh, I mean, this one could honestly even blend if we were going yellow world. Yeah. We all see um, how the colorway turns out of the meadow. And then we'll see which closet color makes the most sense. Does that sound good? Okay. So I'm doing this one in all the little special uh, closets near the kitchen. So we have like a little bar that's going to open up, and then we're going to have that in there. So you still so get to see it. Wallpapers. I'm doing lots of wallpaper. Like a million. Yes. And then this is going to go in two closets, okay. and then this one's going to go in our pantry. Ooh. Okay. Like that. I think I care a little bit more than everybody else. All right, cool guys, right? One of the areas in the house that I am most excited about is the orangery addition. 
The orange ray will sit next to our future kitchen garden and it will have a fireplace, a dining table, a sink for washing off vegetables, and bookshelves for all of my books on herbs and plants. The heated floors have just gone in and Dave and I are on a typical date night over at the meadow. This is such a big room, but it doesn't feel so big, right? And this is gonna feel small. This is gonna feel like tiny. We love to come to the meadow when it's empty to check on progress mm -hmm. and to dream about what it will feel like when it's all finished. This is one of those little things that we do that keeps us feeling grateful about the entire project. As construction is moving along, so is life, and we are focused on enjoying day-to-day -day living at our temporary house. We know we'll never get this time back with the kids, and though we are really, really excited to move into the meadow and do not have two mortgages, we are also really focused on enjoying every minute we can with the family. I can imagine what this place will feel like when we get to live here again, and I love seeing the magic of the seasons here. When I design, I think in elevations, and one of the things I love so much about this house is that I had the opportunity to create a see-through house. I know that lovers of feng shui will not be a fan of this design. In feng shui, it is said that when the front door is in perfect alignment with the back door, all the good energy and good fortune goes in one door and right out the other. But I have lived in lots of houses with this design and have never found this to be true. And I think it's really, really beautiful when you can walk up to a house and see right through it to the land beyond. One of the biggest lessons I've learned through all of my years of designing is that you really have to do you. You don't design a home to crowd please. You design a home to please the ones who live there. The moment you realize this is the moment you're free to create outside of the constraints of others, to get outside the box. I can hear her eating crackers in there. <laughs> it's at this point that a design becomes really personal, really true to you. These are the designs that resonate with me whether I completely agree with a design or whether it's what I would have done, I truly appreciate a design that came from somebody's desire to remain personal and true to themselves. Since this is the first house we've ever designed from scratch without the intention to possibly resell it in the future, I'm getting to do some really unique things, some really weird things, quite honestly, and I am so pumped about it. Roy, do you love it? Yep. You love your house? Yep. Okay. I am trying to make a decision on our countertops and our cabinet material at the new house. So I have these samples here. I have ketchup mustard and wild blueberries wild blueberries are insane and they honestly even stay in your hands and they can even stay in your teeth that's how uh the insane the dye is in the wild blueberries so i'm doing my worst to these samples and we're gonna see which one works i'm also doing it on our current lava stone countertops to compare just to kind of get that comparison but i'll keep you posted aurora is going to now clean the samples well you got to clean the mess the messy part. What? Yes. Good job, Aurora. That doesn't look bad. Is there, is there no wild blueberry stain on that? Obviously we're working the juice around, but messing it. Here, I'll do the next. I can't really do this one handed while I hold the camera. That stain was there and I actually don't know what it's from. 
but it's from something else, not the wild blueberry. But look, I see a little yellow mustard still here, Roy. We we didn't try. And we didn't even use, I wet mine. So Roy, work that mustard right there. And I think that this is one of the lightest samples. So if this one comes off, wow. That's definitely better than the Caesar stone we've used. We are testing out samples of a micro cement that we are considering using for our (laughs) countertops and cabinet fronts. It will look similar to a concrete countertop, but should be a bit more durable and will be easier for our contractor to use. All right. There we go. I can't believe the wild blueberry is coming off of this because wild blueberry is a beast. A real beast, right, Laura? Yeah. Try not to get on your clothes, though, because it will not come out of those. (laughs) I'm impressed. Man, what do you guys think? Wow, that really worked. Look at that. Board. Should we compare it to our our lava stone countertops now and yeah. see what happens? Okay. Yeah. So obviously mustard is not an issue with the lava stone, but you know what's yeah. interesting? Okay, let's see what happens there. Now, if we use water, it should come out. We know that our Caesar stone at the beach does stain from wild blueberries. Yeah. Right. It does. That's why I have to clean this it up right away. This stuff is better than the. Caesar stone. This is a type of concrete. I like this a lot. Man. I really do. Really I think awesome. I'm, I'm for it. So let me get some water because we have solids on there. Man, that's really awesome. All right, now I'm actually going to spray cleaner on it. Let's see what happens. Okay, Are let's see. Yellow mustard? So, well, the mustard is actually the worst thing. Can I try one? Which is get? surprising. Let's give it a second. Okay. Yeah, sometimes you just want to leave it there. All right. Want a wipe, girl? Mm hmm. Huh, I wonder why. Not. But actually, I think it's off now. There's a little on that one. I know. That's and this good. one, it's you not need coming to be off. Strong. You, need you gotta be strong. strong. So mom used her elbow grease. Here we're. Let me try. And where's that one? Okay, let me see yeah. if this will work if I do um, this. Maybe a older person has to do it. Yeah, I think someone's strong. If it's gonna be something like, ooh, that's still there though. Huh. It's that's not still there. So that wasn't a good idea. Let's not spill mustard on our countertops. Let's not use mustard. I don't think we would normally leave mustard on the countertop for that long, though. But it's barely hard to see. Okay. I don't. Oh, I see a little bit of mustard there. So, moral of the story is, don't set mustard on your counters for two hours. But yeah, mama. they're looking pretty good. Oh, that one looks bad. This one is pretty so the good. Lighter, just not off yet. The lighter ones are obviously showing it the most, and those are sort of the ones I was drawn to. See yellow, 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 yellow. This one still has yellow. They all still have yellow. So mustard is a super stainer. So we have to be careful with mustard. All right. It's coming off. I'm gonna try soaking it and see how that goes. The waterproofing went down under where the windows are gonna go. The roof is going on. The orangery is really coming together. I am so excited. The project is now really moving along and we have people showing up on site every single day doing lots of jobs. New spaces are totally taking shape and it is beautiful. I know you cannot see us, but my sweet husband just surprised me here and showed me that we now have a round doorway in our house and I'm losing my mind. Look at this. So the orange re got put on this week. I am super pumped. We have a roof and this room is amazing. Look and see. The roof went up, the walls went up, everything happened this week while I was at work. I got to see it last night for the first time. You gotta check out our moon gate hobbit door. 
I have always loved fairy tales and I wanted to use this house as the opportunity to make some of my dreamiest storybook fairy tale designs come true. Hope you love it. I knew right away when I was designing our house that we needed a hobbit door. This hobbit door or moon gate would lead to a special room called the orangery that would be completely encased in glass on two sides with a big stone wall and fireplace on the other side, complete with a cauldron for cooking from my garden. So opening a crate is generally a lot of fun. I have ordered a lot of antique reclaimed goods from Europe that originally came from farms or gardens for our house. So there's the orangery sink, it's huge. And here's the double sink for the girls. Oops, yeah, it came broken. So it came broken. There's no holes for drainage and that one has a big old gap right there for the water to just fall right out. So. We got our work cut out for us, but we're gonna make these modern and awesome. And they're gonna be so cool. This is the girls' sink. That is actual lichen. This is the faucet. It's gonna go over the sink. It's gonna be so cool. Putting beautiful windows in. Hard to see Johnny through there. I'll come around. <laughs> so they're wet glazing the windows right now, getting them perfect. This is Jenny. Hello. <laughs> yeah, they have put these windows in. There's Nick in record time. I cannot believe how fast the situation has happened. <laughs> it is perfect. Can't wait. The vibe I've come up with for our house is called fairy tale modern. This entails some truly modern elements like these modern Ottoman windows that we're using throughout the entire house. What makes the windows modern is not only the size and scale, but also the material, it's metal, and we have the thinnest profiles available. The profiles on the edge of our windows, meaning the amount of metal that we'll be showing, will be only three quarters of an inch, which is really, really crazy thin. These super modern, minimal windows will be incredible when juxtaposed against the more traditional ones coming soon. Mixing these modern and traditional windows with quirky elements like the moon gate will really help make this house feel like the fairy tale dream I've always wanted. been a couple months since we laid the tarps yes, down okay. on our meadow to attempt to kill the grass and it looks like it is working. Okay. We are checking out our tarp situation that we put down this fall and it's actually working which is really really exciting. So we picked the windiest day ever and the kids are and Dave are moving the tarps and trying to put them in a new spot so we can kill more of that invasive grass. I'm gonna show you here how great this is. So this is where we have that issue. And look, this is where the tarp was. We've got all this empty soil ready for wildflower seeds. I'm so excited. Got Louie, Dave, Justin, and Christian working on the newest project. One day we will have a hill full of flowers, and I can't wait. Mm -hmm.
along with wildflowers. I hope to also have cultivated flowers on our property. And we missed our window in fall to plant bulbs, but I am not letting the winter get away from us. We're here at the meadow and we are planting 1,000 bulbs. These are some very sweet sons here that are doing this for their mom on their holiday vacation. So here we go. I don't know if we'll get all 1,000 done, but we are gonna try, right guys? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Still looking at YouTube Super Star Mom. <laughs> Putting these down about four to six inches deep, you're supposed to go down six, but I have done it with three before and that works as well. So for the lazy gardener, four to six is what I'll say. And popping these babies in in clumps, I like to do as many as I can get in a hole for a really wild, full look when the daffodils are blooming. Another favorite tree over here that's outside of our bedroom window. I think it'll be so pretty to get to look outside and see daffodils in early spring. So let's go pile that tree away with daffodils. 750 down, 250 to go. All right, Grandma Mom. It's really rude right here. I know, it's so rude right here. So just like break them up into lots of little ones. Spread it around, spread the love. So I love this tree, first of all, because I can see it from our bedroom, but also because in the spring and summer, this little area becomes like a tiny room. It's a good little private spot to enjoy the property. So I'm gonna fill it with flowers. I think it'll be magical. I knew this would be a lot of work, so I asked for this from the boys for my Christmas gifts. Presents are great and all, but labor is better. The luxuries. <laughs> now we're going to the front yard. Home stretch. So we're doing this one a little bit differently. This is another favorite tree, and this is the tree you see when you first come up our driveway. It's in front of our house. You can see I am desperately trying to keep this baby alive and healthy. I keep putting my straw out. People keep pushing it in. I keep pushing it back out. So I am going to dress this beautiful tree up with some daffodils and we are gonna try putting the daffodils straight on the ground, sort of burying them slightly. We have kind of like a hay leaf mix here. And then we just found some dirt on the property and we're gonna take the dirt and layer over the daffodil bulb. So we'll see how this one goes, but if it works, it'd be a super easy way to get a bunch of bulbs in the ground. Come on guys, just use your hands. Oh, see what I did here? Bit. See that? It's like, we can basically just stick it right in that. And then we'll cover it. Don't cover it yet. So we can remember where it is. We'll cover it and layer that over it. Christian, I know you're new to bulb planting because you've been a digger. They all have to face up. Oh, dang it. <laughs> and then. Since I was a little kid, I have been able to call the crows. So whenever I see one around, I like to make a scene and call more crows. Four more is dangerous. Giselle, we got some painting to do. Just three is dangerous. There goes one. <laughs> Hello, my friend. I always see those amazing stories about, about people, 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 people who feed the crows and yeah get gifts from the crows, and that is my goal for one day. Yeah, but that's because The other thing I'm doing is taking all the sticks that we find on the property and putting them around all the trees to try to help them grow stronger, to try to help um, create areas that will then decay and help with the mycorrhizal network underneath the soil. So this tree is one that I've been really worried about because I know that it's gonna be getting a lot of pressure on its roots during this construction project. So I'm trying to baby it as best I can 
grabbing the little sticks, breaking them, creating our own little mulch area for the tree to hopefully make it through construction and then thrive afterwards or thrive before. Hopefully we're not gonna rot the bulbs here. These stones do not belong here. All right, so we are done planting 1,000 daffodil bulbs underneath of some of my favorite trees here at the meadow and I hope they do well and I can't wait to see what this place will look like come spring. This place is all about little steps, little steps and seasons of change. It's a place that requires seasons of planning and seasons of patience. I am constantly reminding myself that this is not just about the end point, but it's about the journey. One day in the future, I know I'll be able to look back at all the little details in this house and see these moments. A flower means so much more when it's been planted by hands that you love.